Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. And I wanted to do a uh, lesson answering this question uh, posed by a brother uh, on this video that I did titled Melchizedek's priesthood is far superior to the Levitical slash priesthood of Aaron. All right. And um, it's a, a good question. And I also want to deal with some of the answers particular uh, people posed that are wrong. All right. And uh, the question is sincere questions by Jehu Yasha'Allah. All right. Um, if Melchizedek didn't have parents, as stated in Hebrews 7 and 3, then why does Wisdom of Solomon 7, 4 through 5 say that all kings come from sex? Shalom. And it's basically, uh, from what I see in this question, a lot of uh, brothers and sisters, all right, have time discerning between, all right, these natural bodies and the heavenly bodies, the earthly realm, all right, as opposed to the heavenly realm, all right, and you'll get a lot of your questions answered. I mean, brothers go into these things a lot, so there's other videos, but um, I'm going to advise you to this video here that I did. I haven't loaded it on uh, my main page yet because I just got it back today. I got to get to uh, loading, you know, particular videos that didn't get up because my main page was suspended, but this is my backup page. Uh, remnant save 144 ba uh, a few brothers and, uh, and sisters asked you know where are you posting um and when you don't see me posting on my main page this is my main page if you don't see me posting here it means i'm suspended or locked out or whatever if you go to my page you can clear you can see here my backup pages backup pages that you will see me loading to now this one is out of commission e shut this one down <laughs> all right this is where i load particular um you know clips but here's the new one here two through an info but if you don't see me loading to this page you will look to this page all right uh remnant save 144 ba or you'll see on gms dallas in class 999 or ultimately you'll have to just be on the lookout as brothers will be posting if a new page is posted. So you just got to stay locked in. But uh, on the page, you can see the pages that, you know, I uh, have been loading to. All right. And over the last week, I've been loading to this page. OK. And um, here's the uh, latest news and prophecies. OK. They've been loaded here. So you can check those out on this page. Um. But this video that I did, that I loaded, you know, during the week that this page was shut down, um, is titled Immortals in Mortal Flesh, Understanding Our Origin and Mission. So if you watch this video, which I loaded to this page, but you can go to this one and watch it, it'll answer some of those questions as to um, that may be confusing you. All right. Because there is a difference between. All right. Our heavenly bodies which were given unto us from the foundation of the earth and our earthly bodies, all right, which were given unto us to come onto the earth and fulfill prophecy, okay? And um, when you deal with this question here, all right, if Melchizedek didn't have parents as stated in Hebrews 7 and 3, why does wisdom of Solomon say all kings come from sex, okay? And that can be answered easily. Now, before I get into the answer, all right, this individual, Days of Noah, said Melchizedek is Shem, okay, which that will contradict the scriptures because when you get Hebrews 7 and 3, all right, as it's speaking of Melchizedek, it lets you know, all right, Melchizedek didn't have a father or mother or an earthly descent, okay, and if you understood, all right, in the beginning, all right. If you understood in the beginning was the word, if you truly understood that, then you wouldn't have these questions. But, you know, that's why we're here to edify you. 
okay? Because Shem, when you read in the Holy Scripture, Shem descended from Noah. So that would be a contradiction right there that wouldn't make sense. All right, Genesis 5 uh, and 32, and Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were on the ark with Noah. Noah was their father. Okay, Shem is the father, all right, of the Hebrews, as the scriptures say. All right, uh, Genesis 10 and 21, unto Shem also the father of the children of Eber, the children of the Hebrews. Okay, Shem had a genealogy that can be tracked on earth, all right, whereas Melchizedek's origin was directly from the Most High God, okay? He is the priest of the Most High God, as it states in Genesis, the 14th chapter, okay? Let's get that, and we'll break it all down. So Shem is not Melchizedek. Now, when you do the, uh, the uh, as the uh, brother Sha'ar did it, I'm, the name is escaping me, but when you do the time frame, Shem was still alive, all right, when Abraham, you know, w was born into the earth, all right? So there's a lot of, uh, you know, secular writings outside of the scriptures that state, you know, Shem was Melchizedek just under another name, all right? Shem was not the priest of the Most High God. As a matter of fact, let's go here to Genesis all right. Now, Shem was from a family line of priest from Adam. OK, you know, through the sons of God. All right. To his father, Noah. All right. Noah was a priest. He offered sacrifice when he got off of the boat. OK. Yeah. There, there's there's an earthly priesthood, but then there's an heavenly priesthood. And that's really our origin, the heavenly priesthood. In which, if you watch this video, it'll give you more understanding on that. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but I will touch on a few things. Now, when you go here, all right, the Heavenly Father's promise to Abraham, okay, um, after Abraham came from the slaughtering of the kings, all right, Genesis 14 and 18, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, all right, which is king of peace, all right, king of Jerusalem. All right. Brought forth bread and wine, and he was priest of the most high God. You see that priest of the most high God, Melchizedek, which means king of righteousness. All right. King of Salem. OK, although that land was ultimately inhabited by heathen at this time, that land belongs to us. Through him from the foundation of the earth. It's already promised. Everything was already written. But we had to fulfill what we had to fulfill in order to get back to that land. And you can also understand more on that in that lesson that I uh, showed you. Okay. And ultimately, what was Abraham blessed with? Because remember the family line of Adam. Okay. Which was the first priest on earth. <laughs> okay. We failed. You know, Adam failed. Because of sin, the sins of Eve and we were kicked out of the garden, which is Jerusalem. OK, as you go down the family line, OK, which eventually led to Noah, Shem, or Faxad, all the way up to Abraham. OK, Melchizedek, all right, through the spirit of the Most High God, Yahweh, OK, blessed Abraham. And ultimately, Abraham was, you know, through Abraham, we are promised to be brought back into that land. OK. The promised land, all right, which is Jerusalem, all right, as well as that region outside of that that was promised unto Abraham. We're going to return unto that land and rule in the kingdom of heaven through a promise and covenant and oath that was made to Abraham, which was passed down to Isaac, which was passed down to Jacob. OK, our access to that blessing came through the priest of the most high God who came onto the earth in a heavenly body. This is why Paul, OK, as he's breaking it down. Hebrews seven and one for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God. OK, if you're the priest of the most high God, you're his mediator. OK, and we'll break it all down so it can make sense in just a minute. Who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of kings and blessed him. 
to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace, without father, without mother, without descent, handing neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. All right, now that spirit, okay, when was that spirit created? All right, in the beginning, that was the first spirit created by the Most High. All right, so when you uh, understand this, when you go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, okay, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and 1, it says, I myself am also am a mortal man okay this is solomon speaking as he's in the flesh like to all and the offspring of him that was first made of the earth all right and that was adam you're the we're, we're all the offspring of adam now adam wasn't the first man born on the earth but he was the first to receive the holy spirit OK, and he's likened unto the son of God in Luke, the third chapter. All right. But you have to understand, Adam has an heavenly origin. All right. But what we read about is his earthly origin as he came in flesh. You see, Solomon is speaking of himself in flesh. We are in flesh. OK, as a matter of fact, let's get Hebrews, the second chapter real quick. <laughs> okay and when it's all said and done the, the 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 question will be answered lord willing but i just want to get a few points before i hit the other points this is hebrews okay earth subject to man yahweh shod briefly humbled because why he had to come down on the earth okay to do a duty now, when he came onto the earth, he was born through what? Joseph and Mary, all right, which fulfilled him being born through the loins and lineage of David. But that's only an earthly origin. That's only his earthly birth. Okay, if you understand it, as we bring out all the time in Micah 5, okay, but thou Bethlehem Ephrata, all right, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth, and this is Bethlehem, all right, come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings have been from old and from everlasting. So yes, he, was have to, he, he would have to be born through the loins and lineage of David, born in Bethlehem, as the prophecies say, okay? But his, his true origins are from old. Let's read this in the NLT. Okay. <laughs> but you, O Bethlehem Ephratah, which that's that land, you know, that ultimately um Boaz redeemed that came along with Ruth. Okay. The the the, the whole scriptures, you know, track the, the, the chosen seed and the Messiah that will come forth out of that chosen seed. Okay? But the spirit that was in them had an origin above that birthed that we th even these births we had through our parents okay yeah we have these 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 origins as we come through our our fathers and our mothers all right but the spirit in us was chosen from the foundation of the earth okay let's read this but you O bethlehem ephrata only a small village among all the people of judah yet a ruler of israel will come from you okay <laughs> from Judah through Perez, eventually through David, and so forth, all right? Yet a ruler of Israel will come from you whose origins are from the distant past. Okay, what is the origin of Yahawashai? Okay, let's get it. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was a power. All right. In the beginning was the word. Now, as you read down, 
The same was in the beginning with God. Okay, that's Yahweh Shah's true origin. That's Melchizedek. All right. Now, as you keep down, keep going down in verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. OK, so that spirit from the beginning had to come onto the earth through. All right. A, a, um, a father and a mother. That's how the word was made flesh. And what was he made flesh for to do a particular duty? Now, when you go here. Hebrews chapter two. All right. And I'll just jump to the point. Let's see here. Hebrews 2 and 12, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. All right. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God have given me, which is Yahweh Shai and the elect. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, just as we had to come as flesh and blood, he also likewise took part of the same that through death, he might destroy him that hath power over death, that is the devil. So Yahweh Shai, whose origin is from the beginning, he's the first spirit created, had to come on the earth in flesh. Okay? But this is not the first time <laughs> that spirit came onto the earth. All right? And that's a whole nother topic. But when you deal with Melchizedek, okay, he came onto the earth in that heavenly body. Yeah, though in the flesh, as Adam, he was kicked out of that land and failed. All right, he's coming here to do what? Bless Abraham, who through him, we would be brought back to that land permanently. You see? That's why it was a covenant and promise given unto Abram through his faith, so that we through faith in these times could be justified as well. Okay? But let me stick to the story. Let me stick to the lesson. This is Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 1. I myself am a mortal man like unto all who are born into the earth. Okay. And the offspring of him that was made from the earth. Okay. And we'll get 1 Corinthians 15. I know brothers are thinking that in their mind. That's a perfect precept, right? <laughs> mortal man. I myself am a mortal man. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months, okay, being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth, which is of like nature, okay? <laughs> the, the, the first voice which I uttered was crying, as all others do. I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares, and there is no king that hath any other beginning of birth. This is speaking of earthly kings. Now in the kingdom of heaven, all right, we're going to be kings and priests, but after what order? After the order of Melchizedek, okay, who at this present time is on the right-hand side of the Most High, awaiting, all right, his order, all right, to come and get us and bring us back to that, that glory, OK, for all men, men have one interest into life and the light going out. All right. And he was nursed with swallowing clothes. Now, we know Yahweh Shai was born on the earth as a child when he came through the loins and lineage of David through Joseph and Mary. And he himself, Luke 2 and 7, and she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in manger because there was no room, all right, for them in the inn, all right? So Yahweh Shai was born as a child, as a baby, okay, in the New Testament, right? But what is his true origin, okay? This is speaking of his earthly birth through the loins and lineage of David, to eventually grow up and offer himself up as a sacrifice to bring us back to the heavenly father, starting with the elect. So this is only speaking of the mortal aspect in Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter, the mortal aspect, 
All right. When you go to First Corinthians, all right, the uh, 15th chapter. In the 40th verse, it says they are there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. All right. Now, what is the celestial body? The celestial body. Strong's G 2032. Epuranias. Epuranias. Existing in heaven. Of heavenly origin or nature. Okay, so ask yourself, what is Yahweh Shah's true origin? What is your true origin? Is it this birth that you've had through your mother and father? All right, yeah, this flesh maybe, but the spirit that's in you has a heavenly origin. As we always read in Ephesians, all right, the first chapter, the elect were chosen from the foundation of the earth. That starts with Yahweh Shah. He's the head of that heavenly church. OK, that's the priesthood we're fighting to return to. That's why you have to check out this lesson and it, it further will give you understanding on that. But going back. So you have celestial bodies, bodies in heaven. And then you have terrestrial bodies. OK. Strong's G 1919. Epigaios. Epigaios. To put it plainly, existing upon earth, earthly bodies. Okay. So, as you keep reading in this chapter, okay, is a natural body and a spiritual body. Verse forty-four. All right. And so it is written: the first man, Adam. All right, which we know Adam was not the first man, but he's the first man to receive instruction. He's the first man to receive. The Holy Spirit, the first priest of the Most High on earth. You see? But we have to remember there's a beginning of this all. There was a there was before the foundation of the earth. Okay? Remember, Yahweh Shai, okay, the high priestly prayer. See? As he came onto the earth, he was born to do a duty, right? Verse 4, all, it, it, we, and we always bring this out. John 17 and 4, I have glorified the, uh, thee on earth. He's speaking to his father. He's speaking to Yahweh. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had before the world was. Before the world was, before there was a world, that's his true origin. That's the priest of the most high God. It's just that he had to come down on earth in flesh to fulfill a duty as we are on the earth in a flesh to fulfill a duty. OK. Point blank, period. Now. As I always go to. He prayed for us in this chapter, John 17 and 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Okay, which is key to Ephesians. Okay, we're going to keep driving these points home. Ephesians 1, okay, Ephesians 1 and 3, blessed be uh God and, uh, and Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. See, that's Yahweh Shai's true father. Okay? And Paul was breaking it down in Hebrews 7. Okay? If you have problems understanding Paul's writings, okay, read it in the NLT and then go back to the King James and you'll it'll help you understand it. OK, Ephesians 1 and 3, blessed be God and the father of our Lord, Yahweh Shehem Mashiach, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Hamashiach. See, brothers, we have to start to understand our origin, Yahweh Shai's origin. We have to stop thinking of this particular birth as the end all be all of our existence. OK, and we'll show you. According as he have chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, 
that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So if we were chosen before there was an earth, on earth you need air, you need water, you need food. Before any of that existed, you were chosen. How? Okay, in your heavenly body. See, we were only given these bodies to what? Fulfill prophecy as Yahweh Shah himself. And that should help you to answer that question. Okay, you have to understand the, 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 the heavenly birth, the firstborn church. Okay, as the scriptures call it, and you have to understand how we had to come on earth. We're fighting to get back to that heavenly origin. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I mean, it's the same scriptures that I use in that lesson, but the Spirit is just telling me to hit them. 1 John chapter 3 and 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And what makes you the son of God? He's speaking to the church. Obedience. See, and that's how we were in the beginning. We were obedient. We messed up as we came to the earth. All right, 1 John, or John chapter 1 and 12. But as many as received them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See, we were given these bodies. They were given those bodies at that time to do a mighty work, to believe on Yahweh Shah, to follow him. All right, but that, that wasn't their true origin. Their true origin wasn't flesh and blood as they had to come through their parents, the seed of man and all of that, but of God. That's the true origin. That's Melchizedek's true origin. That's the heavenly king. He's the, the head of the church in the heavens. But we all had to do what? As it says in Hebrews, the second chapter, <laughs> Hebrews 2 and 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he himself also likewise took part of the same so that he can come and destroy death. That he can come and set us up for this moment to be covered. Okay, and brought back to our what? Heavenly origin. Because we're going to rule with heavenly bodies. And you believe that? First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. See, we're going to see him exactly as he is right now on the right-hand side. John happened to see a vision of him in Revelation. He described him, his head of his hair is white like wool. He had the 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 the, uh, the golden the, the girdle the the garment down to the foot. He had hands. He had feet. He he saw him in his earthly his heavenly origin. He saw him in his heavenly exalted body. We are gonna get those bodies, brothers. And see, in Genesis the fourteenth chapter, Melchizedek was on the earth in that body. See, to bless Abraham and for Abraham to pay tithes. And we know it's so much more, but we'll get all of that when we get into the kingdom. All right. We don't, you know, the, the heavenly father through Moses gave us the Torah, which is enough. All right. For us to understand our origin in the beginning, the Allah Hayyam, OK, create the heaven and the earth and our earthly origin starting with Adam. As a matter of fact, going back to first Corinthians 15. OK. Pay close attention to what Paul is saying. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Okay? Through the Holy Spirit, right? The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. All right? <laughs> and he, he's on the right-hand side. Okay? Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. See, we had to come onto the earth and be born, okay, into these bodies for the purpose of prophecy being fulfilled. Adam had to come onto the earth into that 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 earthly body, so that he can fall and eventually the the word can be fulfilled. The first man is of the earth, earthy. See, the second man 
is the Lord from heaven. As is the earth, earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Brothers, we're going to bear those heavenly bodies. Okay, because let's get 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. The temporal and the eternal. All right, we can't be so much focused on the temporal because this is just given unto us to fulfill our duty, to fulfill prophecy. We're just pilgrims passing through. For we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle, all right, were dissolved. We have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, in these bodies we groan, we catch hell. Okay, we get arthritis, we get bloated. Okay, your 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 woman, all right, uh, uh, acting weird. Okay, you have worry. So in these bodies we groan, in the earthly bodies we groan. See, in the earthly body, how was I groaned? All right, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. See that? Which is in the spiritual realm. This is where we're fighting to get back into those bodies and finally rule on earth, brothers. Under the order of Melchizedek. That's why it's after the order of Melchizedek. That's the priesthood we will be ruling, all right, after, under, under on the earth. All right, let me calm down. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15 and 49, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now listen to the, 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 the mystery, the mystery of the resurrection. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We're not taking these bodies, okay, onto the chariots and then coming down in these bodies. No. As I said in that video, this was just your costume to spy out the land and complete your mission. And that's how you have to look at it. Neither the corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling, in the twinkling of an eye, excuse me, at the last trump, when we get beamed up, the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed for this in this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. See, in Wisdom of Solomon, in the seventh chapter, it's speaking of the mortal aspect. See. But we're going back to our original origin as we're going to be born directly of the most high through Yahweh Shai. That's our original order. See, for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Okay, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. And how is that? That's through Yahweh Shai. That's what he was born as a child through Joseph and Mary to do. Okay, conquer death and eventually, all right, be brought back to his rightful order on the right hand side. See, when he came on earth, okay, he's breaking it down because they were, you know, the, the, the disciples were like, man, is the kingdom coming now? No, prophecy had to be fulfilled. We still had a duty. It wasn't, it ain't that easy. Okay. Acts 1 and 15, for John truly baptized with water as he came from a priestly lineage of Aaron. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. Okay, because in Acts 2, what happened? The Holy Spirit came down, but he is in the heavens when he sent down that Holy Spirit. He was in his order that he prayed to get back to as the priest in the heavens, the priest of the most high God. Okay. So as you keep going, 
after he spoke to the disciples, after he, you know, rose for 40 days and 40 nights, he broke bread with particular brothers and sisters. And after that, he ascended back on high. Acts 1 and 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. See? <laughs> And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by him in white apparel. Those were angels. Okay? So right, right there, Yahweh Shai was received back into his rightful position as he was praying to the Heavenly Father in John 17. Lord, I did what I had to do. Bring me back to my rightful order. Okay? Take me back to Melchizedek. Okay? That body which he was on earth in at this time. Okay, and Hebrews, the seventh chapter, broke that down. Okay? Hebrews 7 and 2, to whom Abraham gave a tenth part of all, this being interpreted by interpretation, king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace without father, without mother, and without descent. Okay, now when you look at the, the, the answers people gave, Melchizedek is Shem, days of Noah. Melchizedek is Shem because Shem lived before the law. Shem lived before the law? It, that's not true. The law was given unto Adam. Okay, the law was given unto Adam first. Okay? The law was passed down through Adam, okay, eventually through Noah to Shem. To Arphaxad, okay, to Shelah, to Eber. By the time you get to Abraham, they weren't keeping the law. Now, Shem was still on the earth. So maybe Shem, you know, we'll see. And once we get all the whole story, maybe Shem eventually met up with Abraham and taught him some things about his true you know nationality and the sons of god and you know you know because abraham was not keeping the law but he came from that lineage of shem through our facts at okay to whom the law was passed down through the laws were oral back then okay first thing i want to i mean i guess we'll deal with that too i didn't you know let's get second esdras the third chapter that's answered here. Okay. Second Edges chapter three. And four. O Lord who bears rule and spake. <clears throat> thou spakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth. Okay. <laughs> and that thyself alone. Okay. It was through his order alone and commanded the people and gave a body unto Adam without soul which was the workmanship of thy hands and did his breathe unto him the breath of life. And he was made living before thee. That's when the laws were given. When Adam received the breath of life. All right. We're partaking of that breath in these times as the Holy Spirit has entered into us. It says, and thou leadest him into paradise, which thy right hand planted before ever the earth came forth. <laughs> and who's on the right hand? We'll get you, get that in uh, Psalms 110 in just a minute and get a few more and end it off. And thou and unto him, unto Adam, all right, thou gavest commandment to love thy way. So the first to receive the commandments, all right, which were passed down orally, it was just the way that we were supposed to walk in. See, we were never supposed to have to look at, you know, the 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 you know, the technicalities of this and that and have to know what was right and wrong. Really, it was supposed to be just the way we walked. But we separated from the Heavenly Father due to this flesh and sin. So Adam was the first to receive the commandments. Shem was not before the law. Shem was before the law was written on stone at the time of Moses. Okay. Which was the Heavenly Father, uh, you know, the marrying the nation unto himself. Okay. And, and making a covenant so the curse could eventually come. <laughs> right but uh no shem wasn't before the law the commandment came from on high into the mind of adam 
okay? And when you follow the story, all right, it was passed through Abel, who was slew, then through Seth, all right, which in Genesis, the uh, fifth chapter, the sons of God are listed all the way up to Noah, who had Shem, okay? Noah already knew about the sacrifice. Noah already knew what animals were clean and unclean, right? How did he know that? Because the commandments were already on the earth. Unto him, Adam, commanded to love thy way, which he transgressed. He went off. And through him, we all, you know, that we all fell, as Ezra expresses in 2 Ezra, the seventh chapter. <laughs> all right. So going back here, okay, Melchizedek is Shem, which would contradict what Paul said. Melchizedek had neither mother nor father, and Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High God directly. He was just on earth in that body, okay, to what? For a purpose, okay? So Abraham saw him in that heavenly body. <laughs> Imagine that, okay? And we, we, we're fighting to get back to our original origin to be in that body like him. We won't have, see, in the kingdom, brothers, if you're of that order, you will not have a mother or a father or a father or a mother. You get that? The Levitical priesthood required you to have an earthly father or mother. We are direct extension of the Most High through Yahweh Shai, which that's Melchizedek. Okay? Melchizedek is Shem because Shem lived before the law and he was accounted righteous and had faith of the Most High and Christ. His goings were of everlasting. What? Nah. Shem had a father named Noah. Okay. And he had a mother. It just didn't list her name. Then this other guy, Phenom 50 Facts, he is Shem. Melchizedek is just the title he was teaching Abraham when he was still alive. All right, now it's possible that Shem, who was alive at the time Abraham was alive, when you do the numbers, okay, did meet with Abraham, but that's not written. So we can't add that, okay? Now, when we get into the kingdom, if we find out Shem, you know, did eventually meet up with Abraham, okay, to give him some understanding, hey, but that's not written. But we do know Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High, was there. And as Paul is breaking down, he didn't have father or mother or descent. Okay? Let's read that in the NLT. There is no record of his father or mother or any of his ancestors, no beginning or end of his life, he remains a priest forever, resembling the Son of God, because he is the Son of God. Okay? If he was a Le Levitical priest, all right, he would have to have a father or mother. That was the purpose of me doing that lesson, saying that his priesthood is superior. Okay? Let's get Psalms 110. Before that, let's get uh, Zechariah 12 and 8. In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, okay, beloved, on another level. And the house of David, okay, shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. Who's the angel of the Lord? That's Melchizedek, Yahweh Shai. The house of David shall be as God. Okay, <laughs> and what's that? Allah Hayyam. We're gonna return <laughs> right unto that 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 heavenly glory, and then come on to the earth. You see, and as it said in First John three, we know not what we shall be. All right, but we know, hey, we're gonna be like him, and we're gonna be able to produce. We're gonna have children. 
everything's going to be upgraded though so I, I don't know exactly how but all right the scriptures say these things are going to happen man we'll see it when we get there okay right now we need to, to to focus on our mission and duty here to get there Allah Hayyam, which goes what the, the 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 divine ones the rulers gods works or special possessions of god which which ultimately that's the word in the beginning the Allah Hayyam create the heaven and the earth who's the head of that church who's the head of that gathering yahweh shai man he's the first spirit created and 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 after that Everything came through him. You see? <laughs> That's our origin, brothers. Yahweh Shai's origin wasn't just when he came on the earth, okay, as uh, 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 Yahweh Shai. His origin is from everlasting. It goes back. Okay, hopefully you're understanding this. Let's get Psalms 110. The Lord gives dominion to the king. Okay? Psalms 110 and 1, a Psalm of David. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Okay, who's on the right hand of the Heavenly Father? Hmm? I mean, all you would have to do is just type in right hand. I mean... There's, there's particular psalms that tell you that's how he's going to save. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right. No, that's not the one. Hold up. Yep, Psalm 17 and 7. Show me thy marvelous love kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand. All right, them which put their trust in thee. I mean, it's a bunch of them, man. Psalms 89. And 13, Psalms 80 and 17, let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand and upon the son of man who thou hast made it strong for thyself. And when you get to the New Testament, I mean, it, it, I mean, it just opens it up. Okay, as a matter of fact, we'll just go to the one in Hebrews. Hebrews 1 and 3, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his persons, and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins when he came <laughs> in the flesh, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And that's where he's at now. Send, and he's acting as high priest. He sends us down the Holy Spirit, man. We have a high priest in the heavens. See? Hebrews 4 and 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Yahweh Shai, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our profession. Okay? Hebrews 8 and 1, now of the things which you have spoken, this is the sum, this is the moral of the story. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of all right, of the majesty in the heavens. Psalms 110 and 1, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord have, uh, shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. How is going to do that? Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of the holiness of the, from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. Yahweh have sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. The Lord at thy right hand will strike through kings in the day of his wrath. He's going to do it through his right hand. All right. Which is Yahweh Shai, who's a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Point blank period, man. Okay. So Melchizedek's origin was beyond the earthly realm. He was just on the earth at that time, and the Heavenly Father sent him onto the earth to bless Abraham, okay? He didn't require to be born as an earthly king, okay? Because uh, remember, 
Genesis 35. Genesis 35 and 10. This is what was said unto Jacob. And God said unto him, thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but Yahshua Allah shall be thy name, Israel. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Okay, what is his loins? Chalataza. Chalataza. Seat of virility. What is virility? All right. Semen viral. Let's look it up. Loins. You're, you're, you're out of, you're, okay, your ball sack, man. Let's just keep it real. Okay, and that's crazy, man. The legacy of all nations lie in the ball sack of the men, in particular, the, the nation of Israel, the, you know, our patriarchs, okay, which this world is trying to destroy the patriarchy. Vir virility, the quality of having strength, energy, and a strong sex drive, manliness, masculinity, manhood, machismo. See? So out of your loins are going to come kings, all right? And Solomon was one of those kings, okay? There was many kings, okay? But when we're delivered, remember, we're going to get caught up into the heavens, okay? And that's going to be qualified. There's going to be the 144,000 and the large multitude, Okay? And that's going to be the remnant that's going to be restored. And every child born from that point on will be born into that order. Okay? It's going to be upgraded and changed to a heavenly estate where we will rule on earth finally. Whew. So. And then, the, I mean, uh, Marilyn or Maria <laughs> says, uh. Days of Noah, peace. I thought the answer was earthly kings are birth mortal, which is true. And then there are immortal kings who are translated with a question mark. Okay. And I don't know exactly what she mean like that. I mean, you have particular men like, you know, uh, um, Enoch, who was translated. Okay, uh, uh, Elijah was translated. Okay, Yahawashai was translated. He just brought back to his heavenly estate, you know. But the thing, the difference between Yahawashai and them, he went back to the right hand side. Okay, those men are of the elect. Okay, but Yahawashai is the direct son of God, and we come through that order. So, as I broke down here, you know, I was going to do a quick lesson. Hebrews 12 and 18, you have not, this is the NLT, you have not come to the physical mountain to a holy, to a place of flaming fire, darkness, gloom, and a whirlwind, as the Israelites did at Mount Sinai, but they heard an awesome trumpet blast, this is when we got the law from Moses, and a voice so terrible that they begged God to stop speaking. They staggered back under uh, God's command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. That mountain was considered holy. Mount Sinai, where we received the laws. Moses himself was frightened. All right. No, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. This is what you brothers got to understand. This is what we're entering into, though we see each other in these mortal bodies. Look, this is a heavenly gathering. And to countless thousands of angels, a joyful gathering, you have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself, who is the judge over all things. You see that? You have come to Yahawashai, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and the people. And we're ministering of that covenant. We're teaching you, okay, of that covenant to come while we're in this great spirit. So... Let's see. I mean, that's pretty much it. I don't want to complicate it any further. Um, covered a lot. 
but um, I'm going to load this lesson as well, which pretty much just goes more in depth to certain points that were made here. But we must understand our origin. All right. Your origin is not this particular life. But. All right. As Jeremiah, we were chosen from the foundation of the earth. OK. For this purpose. So call hello. How about Shemiah Shai? All right. Um, double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And uh, hopefully y'all get the understanding. But if y'all don't agree. Hey, you can always go to your page and teach your doctrine that Shem was Melchizedek. Because you know who teaches that? Uh, uh, Elder Rahab, G-O-C-C. -C. So if you want to follow him and his teachings, hey, go ahead. Shalom.